Hey, what's up, man? So, uh, I wanted to bring something up. Check it out, man. I'm home right now. What up? I'm close to everybody. But, uh, yeah, so, I see a lot of these fools, like PP and Thunderdome, all of a sudden they want to talk about odds. <clears throat> now, when you talk about odds, remember, there's no bias whatsoever. It's the dudes setting the lines. And, yeah, they, they do go by who they think is going to bet, but they do go by, you know, what the closest fight going to be. So no matter what your bias is and whatnot, right, you know, if a fight's a 4-1 to one odd against a fight that's a 9-1 to one odd, we can all agree that the 4-1 to one odd is a better, more competitive fight, right? That's the shit that they've been saying. That's the shit I'm saying. Well, it's just a fact, right? A 4-1 to one fight by Vegas odds is a better match, a closer fight than, say, a 12-1 to one fight. This is fact, right? Hey, what's up? I'm home, baby. Hartford, New Haven, Boston. So, uh, anyways, it's hilarious how you dudes are all like, oh, the Con Canelo fight is different than this. That fight was way more of a mismatch. Blah, 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 blah. Right? And not only that, they didn't fight at 160. Canelo let him fight down at 155. But whatever, right? So if that's the case, which it is the case, you're all busted, dude. Because guess what? The Con Canelo fight opened at 3 to 1 odds. I think it might have closed at four or five to one, but it opened at three to one odds, right? That was the opening line set. The Golovkin fight opened at eight to one odds. So that is way more of a mismatch, way more of a worse fight, than Con Canelo. So all you fucking idiots that don't know shit about boxing, you Thunderdome, you precise presenter, there you go. Okay? You're wrong. So, I rest my fucking case. Once again, I prove it with facts. Okay? Facts. Not lies like you dudes do. Okay? You know what else is comedy? And this isn't even comedy. This is this isn't this is just lame. All Thunderdome does, 50% of his videos, and the guy Maxwell that he had at the fights for him the other night, all they do is fucking roast Ward. You know, cheater, ducker, scumbag, lame. You know, ask him this, ask him that. Same thing to Virgil Hunter. Well, guess what? They stumble across Virgil Hunter. Their big chance to say some, big chance to ask him about PEDs, all that. What does the guy do? He fucking, you know, basically asks him what his favorite ice cream is. He chickened out. He just like the fucking pussies that these dudes are, just chicken shits. You're afraid to fucking ask him a question, you know, and Thunderdome will be like, well, I would have asked him, but I wasn't there. Bullshit. And not only that, what you did, you put that on your site to make money. All that shit you talk about them, you see Virgil Hunter, and you fucking get an interview, and you put it on your site to make money. You're a coward, a fucking midget, you're not a man, you have no integrity, you have no backbone, nothing. You know, this just proves you are a fucking Mickey Mouse, mini bike, <laughs> boxing reporter. What a joke. You finally get someone with some kind of name. And uh, he bends over and you stick his lips right to his ass because you're scared. A grown man that's scared. And I use the term grown man loosely. And that Maxwell guy's not off the hook either because he talks the same shit on his page. But instead he's like, oh, 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 hi Virgil, uh, well, what's your favorite ice cream? And not only that, they fucking, you know, they've been talking about the Meldonian thing with, with Wilder for weeks, right? Who'd they run across? Lou DiBella. Here you go. Let's start asking some questions. What do they do? They cower in fright. 
and they ask him what his fucking favorite pajamas are. They didn't ask him shit about that because they're cheesed up cowards with no integrity and then they use the fucking clips on their own site. Not only that, he breaks up the clips into like a bunch of little clips so we can make money. What a fucking joke. I mean, you should be kicked off YouTube forever, dude. If you even think that you're anywhere near a boxing reporter or journalist, you're funny, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm the four-year-old, right? You're the four-year-old. You're mini bike. You don't even know what journalism is. You fucking joke. Fuck you. Yeah, I saw that last video where you tried to get tough with me. Come on, dude. Really? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be answering to that in my next vid. You fucking pussies. All right, here's another one of um, Thunderdome's main minions, like his main guy. Talks shit about everybody. Um, you know, Thunderdome's right hand man. He's always right there in the comment section. And he wrote about the Canelo Khan thing if my favorite fighter, GGG, ever pulled something like this, I would shit all over him, okay? GGG pulls something like this and look at him in the fucking comment section of the heat. Not only does he not do that, because, you know, they're just total spineless frauds, liars. Um, he sticks up for it in this comment. Because the one dude's like, hey, man, you guys are being like a little, you know, intellectually dishonest here, aren't you? So, I mean, th this, this just says it all, bro. You know, there's no spin. There's no way out of this. This is what these dudes are. Just total fakes. And remember, if Iron Fist of Warrior tries to talk his way out of this one, remember... Khan, uh, Canelo opening odds, 3 to 1. Golovkin, Brook opening odds, 8 to 1. I rest my case. There is no fucking way out of this. Anybody with a brain can see that these dudes are just fucking total bullshit, man. I mean, at, at some point, it's not even funny. It's like, wow, really? Wow. You just want to, you know... Yapping, 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 yapping. You want to make, you want to get views off of my name, Precise's name, and Sean's name too. And you put all three of us in the same, so you probably get the highest views ever. See, that's where you're wrong again. Anybody that's ever watched my channel, they know for a fact that I don't care about views, okay? I don't care about clicks. I don't care about any of that, okay? I even don't want views. When I first got on, the guy that I was working for a couple years ago, he was like, dude, you got to get off the fucking YouTube. Either get off YouTube or, I, you know, I can't fucking employ you anymore. And he was paying me all right. Not, you know, all right for this fucking, you ain't going to make no money doing this shit. But, uh, yeah, okay, listen, I have never, ever, ever, not one time said subscribe to my channel to anyone. Okay, ever. I don't tag my videos, Okay. I don't have a Twitter and do all that shit. I don't promote my channel. None of that. So how do you figure that I want views? Everybody knows that I don't give a fuck about views. If I gave a fuck about views, why would I fucking know that my channel's getting taken down? And I said, I don't give a shit. I don't. Because I didn't. I, in, in hindsight, I'm, I'm bummed because I lost some of the videos. And I got to go way back into this, you know, shit where I backed them up and find them. And they're all scattered everywhere. Yeah, that sucked. Because I had some pretty good fucking cool interviews. But... Views, I don't care about views, and that's proof. It's absolute proof, you know? If I was like you, and I, you know, well, you don't interview anybody big. You just interview these puny people. But, like, I would chop it up into fucking little two-minute segments to get views and clicks like you do, which is just total fucking weak sauce. No, I don't do none of that shit. Okay, remember, I've never asked one person to subscribe, to like, to comment, none of that shit. Promote, tag, nothing. So there goes that theory out the fucking window. Live. It's funny how this dude's always like, you know, if you're not a boxer, you wouldn't know. If you're not a boxer, you wouldn't know. If you're not a boxer, you wouldn't know. It's like, you know, come on, man. I've seen dudes like this before. In all likelihood, you know, he goes to the gym, puts some gloves on, and hits the bag a few times. And the next thing you know, he's a boxer, you know. I highly, highly doubt that this dude did 10 years in the ring, like he says, okay? Certainly didn't do it on no amateur circuit, okay? And let me tell you something that anybody that's got in the ring would know this. This is a fact, okay? If you did 10 years in the ring, 
There is absolutely no way out of it that you wouldn't get your nose broken. Everybody gets their nose broken. Everybody. And I mean, look at that beak on that dude. You're going to tell me that that nose wouldn't have got broken? Come on. Look at that thing. I mean, I mean dude, that, it, it clearly hasn't been broken, but look at that fucking thing. God damn, yo. M motherfucking Toucan Sam looking ass Vato. Shit. Motherfucking packing your beak with fucking Colombian marching powder looking ass Vato, man. Look at that shit. God damn. Yo, the nose always knows, yo. God damn. Yo, Toucan. Shit. That fool's nose never been broken, which leads me to believe he ain't never boxed. Because when you box, especially for quote unquote 10 years in the ring, your nose gets broken. And especially that fucking beak. Look at that shit. God damn. Plus, like, look at the target. Look, he's got like the big long horse face and horse teeth. Like, he's got a huge long target on his face. It's like, come on, man. Hey, yo, Thunderdome, why the long face? <laughs> yo, <laughs> why the long face, man? Come on. It's going to be all right. Yo, what up, Scotty Pippen? What's up? <laughs> oh, shit. Yo, look at that fucking schnoz. <laughs> always remember, man, the nose always knows. Yo, Thunderdome. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I told you, man, I got street creds. I'm about that life. Hey, yo, K-Fed, where's Brittany? <laughs> What's up, K-Fed? 